So here they are in their obedience to God's command and God in his faithfulness to Israel. They start multiplying like rabbits. But the serpent hates God's blessings. This is so obvious to see from Scripture, and I'm sure you're in experience. The, the serpent, the line of the serpent, that, that pharaoh symbolized by the great cobra, he, he hates God's blessings. This is just a, a simple fact. The, the more God blesses you, the more you will find that the world is turned in cursing and hatred towards you. Joseph knew this. The more he had been blessed by God and his father, the more his evil brothers hated him. Jesus knew this. The more of the blessing that he had on his life and in his obedience, the more the people around him hated him. We ought to know this. The more God blesses in his unique and sovereign ways, don't hear riches here, but the more God smiles upon us and blesses us and grows us and saves souls, the more the serpent will rear its head to strike. And so we see Pharaoh doing exactly this. Look at verse 8. The new king over Egypt did not know Joseph. In other words, he was not friendly towards what is now a threat to him, the growing, ra- gr- the growing race of the Jews in his own backyard. He didn't see them as image bearers. He saw them as a problem, an overpopulation problem, a threat. Verse 9 says, Behold, the people of Israel are too many, too mighty. Verse 10, Let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they join our enemies and fight against us and overcome the land. Your version might say, escape the land. I think the more faithful interpretation is overwhelm or flow out over or overtake the land. <clears throat> the son of the serpent, the Pharaoh here, the, the evil, uh, I mean, he's the bad guy of the story. He does exactly what his father did to our first father, Adam. He saw a problem. He, he saw that humanity flourishing. He saw God's promises coming true in a land that was bountiful. And he said, that's a problem. Let me deal cunningly and shrewdly, that is, through lies and underhanded ways of speaking and broken vows and false contracts, let's bring these people under our own subjection by dealing shrewdly with them, just like Cain had done to his brother Abel to kill him, just as Joseph had had done to him by his brothers in their attempt to get rid of him, the son of the serpent looks at the people of God and begins to deal shrewdly with them through lies, cunning, uh, they, the, 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 the people who were, there were some who were agreeable to the tyranny. You know, it, it, it was therapeutic tyranny, therapeutic totalitarianism. They stepped on the scene. They said to the Jews, you know, you, you could probably deal with some extra roads, maybe a couple of managers. The government will produce that. What did Ronald Reagan say is the nine most scary words in the English language? I'm from the government and I'm here to help. That's what they did. They just stepped in. They were shrewd. They were cunning. It was the most agreeable, Jacinta Arden typed totalitarianism that you can imagine. I'm just taking swings today, okay? Uh, they came in. They were, fu- they were happy. They were cunning. They were shrewd. They were, they were, and if you stood up and sort of uh, cried, uh, uh, cr- cried foul and says, we don't need this uh, oversight, thank you. We prefer freedom. Then the Goshen Coalition went and wrote an article and sort of just said how you were, you were not reading or obeying... 2 Peter 2 or Romans 13, and that and the government is to be trusted and loved and, and knelt to. That's, that was the mindset. We don't know what, what occurred, but somehow the Egyptians and the Pharaoh and his bureaucracy was able to step in and bring them under their authority and their control to then inch further into slavery. <clears throat> they became slaves now for another nation, moving, it seems, further and further away from God's plan of blessing. Instead of being productive for their own, they were now being utilized for the other nation. The aim here, remember, of the Pharaoh, the aim was not control. It was more severe and malicious than that. It was population control. He didn't just want the power. He wanted the power to kill and wipe out his enemies as he saw fit. <laughs>